Hi everyone, welcome to this advanced tutorial on image-based lighting in LifeFX. In this video, we'll be going over patching options for DMX channels, including animating DMX channels. So, let's start by creating some fixtures in LifeFX. Of course, we can import GDTF templates or add fixtures from the open fixture library and this way have them readily set up right away. But sometimes a fixture might not have an associated template available or the available template is not up to date. In that case, you will have to patch the fixture manually using the DMX table from the manufacturer. For that, you use the fixture patching section in the fixture menu. Once patched, you can then store the fixture as a template for use in other projects using the export and import buttons down here. Let's just start by creating a fixture from scratch by hitting the new button here instead of the add button. We can now define the number of DMX channels, let's go with 8, and now proceed to map them out. As you can see, by default all channels are set to the type DMX value. This means we can just punch in a value between 0 and 255 and that will be sent through this DMX channel. However, if we were to use this fixture to sample RGB data on the underlying image, I can simply set the corresponding channels to sample red, green and blue, like this. Obviously, what I'm doing here has to correspond to the profile the physical fixture is set up to use and as such on which channels it expects the incoming RGB data. Let's assume for now that it's channels 1 to 3. This would now be sending RGB data in 8-bit since any DMX channel only has a range of 0 to 255. If the fixture operates in 16-bit mode, it requires two channels to send the data over. This would be configured like this. First set the sample channel, for the red channel in this case, and the following channel is set to DMX fine value. This will implicitly link it to the preceding channel. Next would be the green sample channel followed by its fine value channel, and lastly, the blue sample channel with its fine value channel followed. As you can tell from the drop down entries, we can as well sample other properties of the underlying image content, like luminance, hue, saturation, and brightness. We can also deliver the sample data in XYZ or CIE XY coordinates to the fixture if it has a profile for this kind of data. Now, let me import a fixture template I've been saving out earlier one from a Quasar Science Q100R2 rainbow tube. Two things you can see immediately. First of all, this fixture is a segmented fixture where we can map individual pixels. Hence, we're getting this grid with individual sample cells. The other thing we can see is that the universes tab here at the top turned red, highlighting a conflict. Obviously, if both fixtures reside in the same universe and start at the same DMX channel, there is an overlap which we do not want to have. If we open the raw DMX viewer, it will also highlight the conflicting channels in red. We can fix this in two ways. A. Let both fixtures reside in the same universe, but offset the Quasar one by the amount of channels of the first fixture. Since the first fixture occupies the first eight channels, we will let the second fixture start at channel 9. Done. Alternatively, we could also simply put the Quasar tube into its own universe. Like that. To monitor the DMX data of this universe, simply put in 2 up here. Note that the name of the fixture that is associated with any DMX channel is also being shown in the tooltip when hovering over the channel. Very convenient. Now you might wonder, why are we seeing such a vast amount of DMX channels when here in the channel list we only have 12 channels mapped? The answer is simple. The Quasar Rainbow Tube has 48 so-called pixels, which can be mapped as if they were individual fixtures. This is being set by two parameters mainly. The repeat in-universe, which is set accordingly to 48, and the sample grid being set to distribute instead of duplicate. Now one more particular thing about these fixtures. If you check the info up here, it says we are occupying channels 1 through 294. However, Multiplying the 12 channels we have in our list here by 48 gives us 576. This would be technically impossible since the limit is 512 DMX channels per universe. So why only 294 channels? Easy. These fixtures come with so-called global channels. Effectively, we have configured 12 DMX channels for this fixture, of which 6 are global channels, 
marked with a capital G here in the channels list. What does that mean? It means that we're sending out the first six channels to every pixel of the fixture, while the other six global channels apply equally to all pixels. As you can imagine, setting individual pixels of the tube to different color spaces or CCT values would anyways be a rather odd undertaking. Knowing that, the math is now different. We only have 6 channels multiplied by 48, giving us 288 DMX channels, plus the remaining 6 global channels. And now we are at 294 channels overall. Now as we know, one tube rarely comes alone. Typically you would have a complete rack with a couple of these tubes. If that is the case, let's say we have 10 tubes in one rack, we would also use the repeat the universe parameter here and set it to 10. This gives us a grid that appears to be far too fine. We have to tweak another parameter over here in the color sampling tab and set the sequence to 10 as well. Nice. Now we have a grid of 48 by 10 sample cells and we can operate 10 individual tubes with 48 pixels each, very conveniently as one big fixture inside LiveFX. Now let's look some more at different DMX channel types. What else do we have here? Next to the sample options we have a few more DMX channel types, custom range and option list. Let's look at what they do. The custom range is pretty straightforward. Let's take the CCT channel for instance. It sets the color temperature of the fixture to a value between 1750 and 10,000 Kelvin. Right now it is set to DMX value, so we punch in a DMX value between 0 and 255 that corresponds to a Kelvin value. Right now somewhere around 5800 Kelvin I would assume. This of course is fairly abstract and you always have to do the math in the back of your head. Let's simply set this channel to custom range and using this button over here enter the channel editor to define the range. Just set the minimum and maximum values as well as a value in between to default to and hit OK. We can of course also make this a 16-bit setting by enabling the two channel option down here. In that case we would need to make the next channel, number 8 in our case, a fine value channel. Now we can simply enter Kelvin values and LiveFX will translate them to the correct corresponding DMX values under the hood. Further down on the list we can find some channels set to option list. This allows us to map single options to DMX values and provide those options in a convenient dropdown. Opening the channel editor we can see the options for color space and how they are mapped. Rack 709 corresponds to a DMX value of 0, sRGB curve to DMX value 27 and so on. Once configured we can select these options from a drop down right inside the channel list. Once I have things set up the way I like I can also store a channel template in the tab over here in order to apply it to other channels or other fixtures. Note that we can also access any of these advanced channels here in the mixer menu by clicking the fixture control button next to any of the fixtures. This opens up this quick access menu with all sliders and drop downs associated with this particular fixture. Now we'll come to the last part of this video tutorial, animations. There are a number of ways of how to animate parameters that have an impact on the stage lights. Looking at the channel type drop down we can also find two link options, OSC and universe channel. Let's start with the universe channel. This basically allows me to forward or route incoming DMX data captured via SACN to this specific DMX channel. The incoming DMX data can originate from a lighting console or another software. To make this work all we have to do is put in the universe number and desired DMX channel number here into the description field. Alternatively, I can link to an open sound control URL, short OSC. OSC can be output from almost anything. To capture OSC URLs, we have to first enable the OSC source here in the LiveLinks menu, which we can call up from the tools dropdown in the top menu bar. Make sure to set the port correctly. In my case, I have a little iPhone app with a simple slider that can go from 0 to 1. If I add the tag as a lifelink I can see the incoming values. Note that in order to use the tag with the DMX patching you do not need to add it in as a lifelink. It just needs to show up in the list of available tags on the left. 
Now, same as before, I would put the tag into the description field of the corresponding channel. And as you can see, now I get the values transmitted by the OSC URL here on the channel. LiveFX will by default assume that the incoming values are in the DMX range of 0 to 255. But as I said earlier, this URL will only go from 0 to 1. In the channel editor, I can tell LiveFX that this is the incoming range, which needs to be mapped to the entire range of the DMX channel. Perfect. Now I could animate, for instance, fan control or a demo channel or the CCT value through a slider on an iPad or my phone or any device that can output OSC. Lastly, let's look at how to create animations for any DMX channel right here in LiveFX. For this, make sure that in the config menu, store fixture settings per shot is enabled, since otherwise the animation controls over here on the right side will stay grayed out. Here in the Grade and Animation tab, we can configure up to six animations with keyframes. Note that they will only become available after any of the DMX channels in here is set to any of the animation channels. Let's select Animation 1 and give this channel a name. Let's assume this is the CCT channel, so temperature seems appropriate. Let's also define the range of 1750 to 10,000 like we did before. Now, switching back to the Gradient Animation tab, we can find the first animation channel enabled with the proper label. Now we can use the animation controls over here on the right. The easiest way is to use Auto Key. Enabling that will create a keyframe every time a parameter is changed. So, let's go to the beginning of this clip and change the value. If we now scroll forward a little, we can see the keyframe on the mini timeline. Let's quickly add a second and third keyframe. Here we go. When enabling Auto Key, the navigation mode is automatically set to keyframe navigation over here. In this mode, these buttons, as well as the hotkeys control left and right arrow, will jump to the next or previous keyframe on the mini timeline. Now that we have created our animation, we can play the clip and follow the animation, which is linked to the CCT channel of the fixture. Nice. If we want to tweak the animation curves, we can simply drag the Animate button over here onto the parameter we want to modify. This opens the Animation Editor and lets us tweak the animation curve. Holding X or Y on our keyboard will lock the corresponding axis, and Shift-clicking a keyframe will pop up the calculator to punch in a number. Note that it also features options to extrapolate any animation, which might be useful for live events or longer clips. Global mode allows to shift or stretch and squeeze the entire animation in time and value. Let's close the animation editor. Of course, we can also animate other parameters like the RGB gains, saturation and more. We can also live link any of these parameters using the live option over here and link it to any incoming live link, like for instance the OSC URL from earlier in this video. This however is for another tutorial. Also animatable is the position and size of any sample box, so you can conveniently adjust it over the course of a shot. If a fixture is set to fixed color, of course we can also animate the color. We can delete keyframes using this button and reset the entire animation using the reset button next to it. To tweak keyframes and adjust animations, a set of hotkeys is at your disposal. You can find them all in the help menu, which you can call up anytime by pressing hotkey H or click the question mark button over here. These animation controls work the same throughout the application, so if you want to not animate the color grade or any other aspect of an individual fixture, but the entire image as such, you can at any point go to the LiveFX tab and for instance switch to the numeric menu. In here, you can again enable Auto Key and change any parameter over the course of the clip. In case LiveFX is also driving the LED volume, this could be used for not only color grading the content on the LED volume, but at the same time also color grading the input source for the image-based lighting. That's it for this video on patching DMX channels and applying animations to them. See you in the next one.